Yeah. What's up? This is the J. Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, July 18th, 2017. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Yeah. It's uh, 820. I got up at about, I don't know, 715. That seems to be my thing the past week is wanting to get up at 630 or 645. You know, I tend to treat these things in 15 minute increments, but I end up, you know, snoozing it until 715 like a naughty boy. I, my, uh, my wife has been taking care of some family <clears throat> downtown not downtown it's further south but so i spent the past couple of nights sleeping alone <laughs> not even my cats will join me um it's probably because i'm watching one punch man <laughs> and laughing my ass off way too hard and farting so sorry cats before i get into anything let me just before i forget because i forgot to even put that in my what do you call it in my uh, talking points yeah I have talking points this week I actually have come prepared and are these volumes okay I seem to be on the louder side no fuck off sorry before I forget anything and potentially get overwhelmed by the fact that there's Deftones playing in the background um if you have heard of or have not even seen the show on Netflix, One Punch Man, I don't know if you're an anime fanatic or not and you've heard of it, or you think it's mainstream and you think I'm stupid for watching it because I'm not a real fan, that show is the shit. One Punch Man. Okay? It's a anime, and, you know, even the most serious animes tend to have some kind of comedy behind them. This is not just the best anime, aside from, like, you know, Dragon Ball Z or Rurouni Kenshin or anything like that. It's just, this is just, like, the greatest show I've ever seen. Like, it's just the perfect level of comedy and badassery, like, combined. But, like, occasionally... I don't know. It's not your typical show where there's a plot and a plot twist and, oh, God, is the hero going to die? He can kill anything with one punch, yet somehow the show makes you want to watch it, even if you kind of already know how it's going to go. I mean, there's like 20-odd episodes in the season, and I'm only on the fourth episode now. I'm taking it day by day. I'm not trying to binge watch it, okay? I'm trying to, you know, enjoy it like a fine wine. So yeah, the show One Punch Man, whether or not you're a fan of cartoons or anime or not, I heard about it through Bill Burr. So he was the last person I would expect to hear that show, that kind of show about. But I was just like, ah, yeah, I'll give it a list. I'll give it a watch. You know, it's not like I'm watching anything else except rewatching The Office with my wife. I just <laughs> this this is funny and sad. Hold on. Yeah, Deftones have a song called Labia. So just, uh, you know, drink that in. Um, yeah, I just rewatched Malcolm in the Middle. Okay? So even after seven seasons where I recognized the vast majority of all the episodes, I was like, wow, I watched pretty much all of these when I was a kid. It was almost like going back and rewatching that 70s show on Netflix a couple years ago. It's like, bruh, you already did this. The show ended when you were a freshman in high school and you watched the season finale. The series finale, and they had the cast on and everything. Man, I know I talk about the 90s a lot, but the 2000s were the shit too. It's just this current decade that kind of sucks, you know? Even the first couple years were cool, you know, even with the friends falling out. Not the French. The friends. But yeah. So anyway, I rewatched Malcolm in the Middle and realized that was kind of a waste of time. I was like, wow, I had pretty much already seen all these episodes when I was a kid. So it's just weird because this was before DVR. This was before everything. It's not like I was 
religiously watching TV or anything, so it's like, wow, how did I catch all of those episodes? I mean, maybe there were maybe five to ten in that mix of 150 episodes that I hadn't seen or I didn't quite remember. But for the most part, I was like, okay. But I don't know. Sometimes it's cool to just go down memory lane. And even though it's not the 90s, it was the 2000s, and I'm like, okay, this kind of this still takes me back to my childhood, good years and shit like that. Um, but yeah, so I did that. I finished that. Now I'm watching One Punch Man, I'm trying to get some fresh shit in my life. You know, aside from being productive and actually doing something great with my life, I'm trying to, you know, have some new entertainment, do new things, get a new job, new career that I can finally sink my teeth into. I don't know. I don't know how to start off this podcast. I just, it's kind of like how I get up in the morning. It's like, even though I typically get up early, sometimes I do not know how to start off my mornings like I do things way out of order way inconsistently day to day and wait hold on a second yeah so my printer is being a dick so I wasn't able to print out my talking points so I'm switching between screens over here um but I don't know I find that the smartest thing I can do when I first wake up is to just drink a big-ass glass of water and then do one of two things. Either go for a walk or a bike ride while playing Pokemon Go, or um, just start cleaning the house and organizing shit. Just, I do something physical. I listen to music, or I do it in silence. Basically, I don't immediately get into a stupid, stressed-out, you know... Duh, I'm going to be the best person I can be. Uh, I'm going to meditate every day and not, you know, ugh, I'm going to be Mr. Silicon Valley. You know? Fuck the early days. These are the successful days where people finally want to reach out to you and not be flakes anymore. So I, <laughs> I find that, yeah, basically those two things are kind of similar. They're just doing physical tasks that require little to no mental stimulation. Save that until like, say I wake up at 6.30 or 7 o'clock, basically save that mental shit until uh, 8.30 or 9. Like, give it two to three hours. Do something physical, and then, you know, start worrying about the job hunt, or, you know, checking emails, or going on social media. Oh, by the way, my name is Jay Dennis. It's July 18th, 2017. It's about 8.30. And as you can tell, I'm still alive. Why should that mean anything to you? Because I deleted Facebook off my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'll give you a second to uh, enjoy that. <sighs> that album you're listening to, if you can hear it, you should be able to hear it because it survived my professional sound check. Uh, is Deftones Around the Fur came out in 1997 it's turning 20 this year you know it is what I consider to be their best album I'm going to talk about them in a little bit Deftones uh, so yeah I don't know if you guys have a similar problem as me when it comes to waking up you have your little routines or whatever there are some things I do consistently, you know? I take a piss and I feed the cats. Those are always the first two things I do. I, <laughs> The cat always tries to follow me. I have two cats. The girl cat always tries to follow me into the bathroom because she's the one that's, like, headbutting me to wake up to feed her. And, you know, I kind of want to train my cats to not harass me, but at the same time, I find it endearing. It's like, dude, dude these are your these are your kids, man, you know? They live in this big house. Let them be a little naughty. That's what cats do. All cats do that. They when they want to be fed, they're gonna they're gonna harass you. At least she's not like scratching me or doing other stuff. Sometimes I'll play dead, and then she'll just 
lie at the end of the bed waiting for me to get up so she'll quit harassing me. Um, but yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have any issues with getting up and getting into a rhythm, you know? But I find that doing something physical and not as mental, but when you're organizing a house, you start to get some mental buildup and you're like, okay, this needs to go to that room. This needs to be thrown away or donated. This needs, you know, you start thinking about all this shit, but to alleviate that, you just kind of just word vomit onto a paper or something. But I don't know. I'm very happy when I'm cleaning and organizing, especially my own space. So I actually find it to be relaxing, but it's also extremely productive. So I, uh, I sent a relative yesterday a private video of a tour of my house, hoping they got it. Um, the funny thing is, just 30 minutes after I sent that video, I got the house so clean and so organized because we're entertaining an Australian friend. So, uh, yeah, that video <laughs> isn't really representative of what this house looks like anymore. Um, at least two of the three rooms you saw look a thousand times better now. So, enjoy at some point in the future. Um, oh, yay. Around the Fur self-titled track, or the uh, title track. Um, so, yeah, I'll do physical stuff. I'll ride my bike. I have a bike now. I'll go for a walk around the block. Not a run. I find that biking and swimming are excellent forms of cardio, but running, unless you're sprinting or unless you're on elliptical, I find running to be fucking stupid. Especially long distance running. And it, it really, it's really sad because you're doing some kind of, it's like CrossFit. You're doing some kind of physical activity. You probably feel good about yourself. Maybe you're part of a group or a community and all that sadness you felt in high school is going away because people are finally fucking accepting you and then there's fucking Jay Dennis with his podcast over here and he's just gonna shit on you! But if you look at it objectively, I just can't help but not just gloss over the fact that you are fucking up your body. So... My suggestion to be more like me, uh, <laughs> if you're going to do cardio, do swimming, biking, or if God, you have to run, get on an elliptical or just do some power walking or find a grassy knoll and do some sprints. Sprinting is way better. It taps into some much more in-depth physiological nervous system stuff that's better for you. It burns way more calories, too. Um, long distance running on sidewalks and pavement and shit. Really bad for you. Uh, excuse me for a second. I'm gonna... I'm gonna, uh, what do you call it? Pause this so I can refill my coffee. And... With little to no pause in between clips, I'm back. Right? Yeah. I was actually getting kind of, uh, uncomfortable... And awkward. It's probably why this podcast has already droned on so long. Um, um, yeah, I'm sitting down here in my basement, which is the shit. Just give it, give it a few months. It's gonna be a solid place for a studio and some classic gaming and whatever. You know, not that generic man, man cave shit. I would never have a man cave because I'm upset with my marriage or anything. It would be because both me and my wife believe that when it comes to your own personal workspace, you should be able to separate your home life from your work life. So, in our one bedroom apartment, we weren't able to do that. You know? My desk was at the nucleus of the place. So all my stress and all my work and all my productivity was just right there for the person to enjoy. The person being my wife. And the same thing with her. She'd do it in bed, or she'd do it on one of the recliners, and yeah. But now, we each have our own spaces for our work, you know? And it's awesome. And plus, this place is pretty much soundproof. So you better believe at some point, I'm going to get my drummer over here. 
or even uh, just my own drum set. I don't know. Once <laughs> once I have some real money. So yeah, if you're like me, let me get to the point that I've been trying to make for 15 minutes. If you're like me and you have a hard time getting shit ready, you know, hit the ground running in the morning, just go do something kind of physical, okay? It, you know, if you're in your 20s and you got a bunch of mental stress, or you're in your 40s or your 50s and you got a bunch of backed up emotional baggage, just start off and do something physical. Don't go to the computer right away. Go outside. Go for a walk. Walk your dog. You know? I'm sure you already do, but just, just, just avoid. Just avoid all that stuff. Notice how I only mentioned people in their 20s, 40s, and 50s. I, I, that applies to people in their 30s, too. And as for people in their 60s or 70s, uh, they probably, you know, they're probably already settled into a routine at this point of the game. And the people in their zeros and tens, uh, I don't know. So, yeah. As I'm, <laughs> I cannot believe it's taken me three podcasts to get to this, but I noticed this one of the first days we were here down in this basement. Um, as I'm getting the house cleaned up and organized and integrated for my life, the downstairs, uh, the basement has a bathroom in it, and you'll never guess what I found in there. I found 90s, 90s. Head and Shoulders Shampoo. That's right. So, there are certain cleaners and shit you look at. They're not really going to have an expiration date, but usually you'll see like a patent pending or something if it's older. And it'll if there's a patent pending thing, it's going to have the year. So, I think this was from 1998. And then I saw a couple of other cleaners from this random pantry way in the back. And even in the downstairs uh, bathroom, I keep saying downstairs, it's the basement. Um, I found some Tylex, or, or some Fantastic, from 1993. And I know what you're thinking, what the fuck? Why? Dude, you have a problem, man. What is, what is your infatuation with this shit? I'll tell you why. It's because, if you're any type of aficionado of the past... A lot of things you can still get your hands on. You can get toys, music, entertainment, movies, uh, paraphernalia, furniture, uh, if you're lucky, clothing. But you know what's not in circulation or not as easy to find? Consumer products. That is the everyday, day-to-day -day stuff right there. In fact, my father-in-law who was here, I think last week, who, just seeing old pictures of him, you know, holding my wife when she was a baby, and the way he was dressed looking like Ned Flanders, I'm like, bruh, I need to get my hands on some of those sweaters, or some of that clothing you had, because if I'm going to make a 90s style music video, I'm going to need some of that stuff, and we're kind of the same size, so, it always blows my mind when there's guys, when there's men, especially father figures, that way less than me, but they still look bigger than me. And it's not because I have a fat gut, okay? I don't know. This isn't some sort of, you know, contest or anything. It's just, even at 26, I'm a man that has broad, meaty shoulders, and I have, you know, an ass and thighs, and I don't have chicken legs. I have, you know proportional legs, and I guess my arms are kind of big, even though I'll never be satisfied. Fucking, I still get surprised, especially if I haven't been going to the gym as consistently. I'm like, what? You're only 180? You look bigger than me. I don't know. It's just some weird thing, and you're listening to it. Enjoy. So yeah, I just find it really cool, and this happened last year when I was in uh, Oregon at uh, Gearheart Beach when uh, Pokemon Go first came out. And uh, I regret not taking these, okay? We stayed in a condo, and in one of the closets, there was a bunch of people's random stuff, like puzzles and shoes, and a pair... There was 
a single wrapped package of a single roll of bounty paper towels. I'm like, wow, that logo looks vintage. And I looked, it was from 1996, I think. I regret not taking that. It was cool as fuck. Okay? They don't make that stuff anymore. Sure, they'll do throwback releases every now and then for like Pepsi and Mountain Dew. Oh, real sugar. <sighs> you know, that'll spike up your estrogen levels, cortisol, whatever. So I, I, I'm sorry, okay? I get excited when I find that kind of stuff because it's just more things to my collection that are like, good luck. Good luck going on Amazon or eBay and finding, you know, an unopened box of Dunkaroos or something that isn't like $8,000. So when I find stuff like that, it's pretty great. So yeah. Yeah, the last person who had this house definitely had some gems left behind. So I'm pretty excited that I got to sift through some of that. And the funny thing is when her dad was here... <laughs> He actually used it. I, I I started to panic. I was like, where where is it? Where's the head shoulders? Where's my head shoulder? I was like, where's my where'd it go? So I looked in one of the upstairs bathrooms and wouldn't you know it, her dad had used it. I'm like, dude, because I call him dude. I'm like, dude, you know that shampoo's like 20 years old, right? So anyway, here's Wonder Wall. This music is great because it's making me realize, oh yeah, when I forget what I want to say, I can fill the void. Um, so yeah, to uh, summarize, I have 90s shampoo and a couple of cleaners. I have Tylex and Fantastic. So the last person who had this place, thank you for leaving behind those gems for me. For me? Um... So yeah, um, I haven't just been, you know, kicking rocks and trying to straighten this place up or anything or move on with my life and plant my stupid roots here. I've also been in the process of editing a new video for the Jay Dennis YouTube channel, which is, you know, it's gotten a couple subscribers over the past few months. So... At this rate, I'll be at 100, hopefully, by the end of the year, if I'm lucky. Mm. The cinnamon hazelnut coffee is so good. Just drink it black. It's medium. So, I think it's time I finally treated you guys to some gossip and some real information. Okay? Because a lot of this information and all this how to make your life better... Like, why would you want to listen to me? What, what, what kind of example am I setting? Sorry, I don't have a mansion or, you know, I don't have all my debts paid off yet, but I like to think on some spiritual level I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> but I actually have some real substance and some real information for you right here, right now. If you are ever, 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 ever planning on moving to Metro West Orlando, that's West, the west side of Orlando, don't do it. But more specifically, if you do have to do it, um, do not, do not live in Island Club apartments. Island Club. Big blue signs. It's off Kirkman. It's in the corner of Raleigh. Do not, do not live there. I'll get into more details in the video once I'm done ed editing it and everything. But understand that it was a very toxic place, but I lived there purely out of necessity. Okay? So, and again, I'll get more in depth with that when I get to the video. But the information I want to get to you guys is if you take away anything from this podcast, I've lived in Many different apartment complexes throughout my childhood, throughout my 20s, and this was easily the worst by a large margin. Avoid this place at all costs. Even if you just look up the reviews of this place, 
whenever you see like nine horrific reviews and then one really good one, that's suspect. So, do not live there, for the love of Christ, even if you're desperately looking for a place. I mean, hell, when I when we first got there, back in the summer of 2015, it was under a different management group and it didn't seem so bad. But over time, it progressively got worse, a new management group took over, and it was just horrific. And I'm gonna... I think this video is gonna be somewhere between 9 to 12 minutes, we'll see. But I'm editing it right now. I'm working on the voiceovers. I want it to be a presentation. But I've already... I took videos throughout the course of this year. I just took random videos of the place. And took... I took pictures of every way I got fucked over. So, uh... Yeah. That's gonna be coming out soon. For my YouTube channel that doesn't seem to be producing a lot of videos lately. Uh... There is something to look forward to. Uh... I'm trying to leave behind the toxicity of Orlando... But I need to have some closure, and one of the best ways I can do that is by providing a service and giving back to my community and letting them know, hey, avoid this fucking place. Same thing with my last job um, that I worked at at the beginning of this year until, until I left Orlando. If you're in the IT field or you're looking for some sort of Microsoft education on their products, avoid... Nikomp International at all costs. I can go into even more detail about that, but you know, I can't roast my old complex and then roast my old job at the same time. I'm not just some bitter guy. Like, these are both entities that have fucked me. Like, literally. Not with, like, lube or anything, but I mean, like, most jobs I've had in the past have upset me in some way. Oh, I didn't get a promotion. I'm talking these places have fucked me financially and other ways. Okay? So, like, these are real, real issues. So, avoid Island Club. It's across the street from Valencia West, which is the community college. Valencia West Campus. Avoid it. It's off Kirkman and Raleigh. Do not live there. I promise you. When I vouch for something, I will give it rave reviews and make it good. But if something is bad, oh, you better fucking believe I will roast the shit out of it. Okay? But that, 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 that really is a real thing about me, though. Like, if something is good, I will vouch for it. And I will I will help promote it and make, make it, you know, make it stand out. But if it, if it fucks me, oh... I'm not nice. I will... Yeah. Especially if you're a corporation or some big business that's... Fucking people out of a bunch of money. Yeah. I got a vendetta. So what else do I want to talk about? Yeah, like I said. I'm trying to leave behind the toxicity of Orlando behind. And... Even though I've had some closure with some people. Something I've been struggling with... For the, like, the better half of this decade is moving on from old friendships. And even somebody like me that's achieved so much the past five years. You know, graduating college, getting married. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, anybody can get married. But I got married to somebody amazing, okay? Some people spend their whole lives looking for that. Or, you know... But, hey, everybody's got a different story. If you don't find that person until you're 50, that's fine, okay? So, needless to say, I've achieved a lot on my own the past five years. But, like, one of the biggest reasons why I've been trying to wean myself off of social media, and I've been successful at it, is I'm, as badly as I kind of still want to be a part of some people's lives, I realize... They clearly don't want me in their lives. So, without sounding too cliche, you realize in your 20s who your real friends are. Okay? I've kind of already said this to some people. It might sound familiar. But, like, you make friends in high school when you're a kid, in college. But then once you really start to transition and you start to make some moves, that's when you really find out who's going to stick it out with you. 
And if you feel like you've wronged some people and you try reaching out and making it right and they just say fuck you by ignoring you or not even giving you the time of day, you just got to say fuck them. And it really sucks because some of these people, you kind of had a feeling that they were going to do this to you. But you didn't want to be cynical. You didn't want to, you know, let that negativity consume you. You wanted to give them a chance. Maybe these people have some shit going on in their lives and they don't have the energy to reach back to you. Fine. But I still try to extend myself and be there for some people. And this isn't being a people pleaser. These are just a select few people in my past. But it doesn't always yield what you want. And whether or not you're leaving the state and you give people plenty of notice that you want to maybe see them before you leave... You know, some people just don't reciprocate. And that's when you really find out who your real friends are. And whether or not they're good people or not. And if they were bad people, I wouldn't have been friends with them in the first place. But it's just all this phony, flaky, flighty bullshit. And you know, I'm pretty selfish. And I typically don't make plans with people. I'm usually doing my own thing. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Oh god, I love this song. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to move on from that. And that means getting off social media some ways, clearing out your friends lists, unfollowing a bunch of people. Oh, you want to see how they're doing? Oh, you're happy for their success? Yeah, that's okay for a little while. But if at some point they don't want to reciprocate, you just got to say fuck it and just get rid of it. One of the coolest things I saw on Twitter was the singer of Amur, Frankie Palmari. Somebody asked him, hey, how come you don't follow anybody? He's like, why why the hell would I want to read a bunch of other people's thoughts? He purely uses Twitter to respond to fans, but he doesn't have a feed. He doesn't follow anybody. Yet he has a bunch of followers. And you'll see that with a lot of celebrities. They don't have a lot of... They don't have... They don't follow a lot of people... But, you know, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I'm not a celebrity or anything, but like, I'm trying to have that mindset where, oh yeah, of course this guy's got a couple thousand followers. It's because he's following thousands of people. Yeah, enjoy your newsfeed, bitch. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm in a new city. I'm married to one of my best friends. And I got family out here. Some people getting married into the family. So I really do have a shot at, you know, new friendships, new people. Don't worry. Nobody's being replaced. Uh, but I don't know. It's just really funny when you try and reach out. And you think people think you're cool or you're badass. But whatever. It's whatever. If you have a decent amount of self-esteem and you got some prospects going for you, it's not that hard to move on. Because you know why? There's too many fucking people on this planet to be concerned about, oh, this person that I thought I was friends with doesn't want to be with me anymore. <sighs> Dude, there's so many other people out there that you can connect with. And this is the prime time to find those real friends. So, um, yeah, in light of all that, uh, I forgot if it was the same day or the day after, but one of the few reasons I use Facebook is to uh, check in with the Reno Pokemon Go community, and there was a level 4 raid, Tyranitar. I had, don't have this one yet, so I'm like, oh my god, we need at least 6 to 8 people to take this shit down. And 12 people showed up, including me. So 11 people besides me showed up. And I was like, hey, got a bunch of potential friends right here. I mean, no, I didn't stick around. And, you know, I'm sure as soon as we took down the boss and I caught it, yada, 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 you know, people kind of just dispersed. But I kind of saw that as a an idea of, oh, I can use this game to make friends. God, this podcast sounds so sad. 
Aw, oh, Jay doesn't have any friends. He can't make any friends. That's not the truth. But my vast number of friends did dwindle over the years. But it's like, I'm mostly okay with that because I had to take care of me, you know? And that's fine. Sometimes you got to be an asshole. Sometimes you got to be selfish. It really is true that nice guys do finish last. But that doesn't mean I'm going to be a raging asshole to get everything I want, you know? I still got pe I still had and have people in my life that I've met that wanted to be a part of it. So it's like I'm doing something right. But throughout the course of my professional career, whatever the hell I'm going to do, yeah, there's going to be some new people because Despite losing some long-term friends over the past decade, um, anytime I had a job, people wanted to hang out. So, whatever. Yeah, this song, Head Up, it's fucking good, man. Come on. Sorry, I'm trying to open up the notes again. So, yeah, I caught a Tyranitar. It's like, it, not only is he like the hardest raid boss, but he's also the hardest to catch. But I did it. I got it. And uh, I'm pretty fucking happy about it. Because like Dragonite, I feel like too many people got him too soon. It's like, bruh, you're cheating. You know, when you're playing gold or silver and you finally get Tyranitar, you feel like the shit. So yeah, I have, a, I have an excellent Tyranitar now. And outside of that, I'm replaying Dead Space. You know, played that, I think, beginning of 2011. That's when I, I got it. It's kind of when I really got into horror games. And then I got Dead Space 2 a, a little bit after it came out. Um, so yeah, I'm replaying the Dead Space series. Uh, trying to get back into the lore of it. I don't know. I'm just trying to find ways to pass the time. It's like... I don't have any new games or anything like that. I would just love to play... You know, Crash Bandicoot or something. But I'm going to wait till the price drops. Uh, but yeah, back to the topic of friends. We actually have some neighbors that are our age. They're another young couple living next door. And they brought us some wine. And they invited us into their basement. Uh, we haven't gone yet. But... Yeah, the husband came over. He's a firefighter. The guy's freaking huge. And he's like, oh, yeah, we'll have to have you guys over sometime and, you know, cook something up. And in my brain, I'm just like, that sounds awesome. Oh, God, how do I tell these people, hey, I mean, this is how you do it. This is the, this is the answer to the question I haven't even asked yet. You just go, hey, we tend to lean more towards the vegetarian side. Is that all right? And then, boom, there you go. But it's just, this is not really a serious problem, but it is a problem. It's the awkwardness of being a vegetarian slash kind of vegan person. You're just like, oh yeah, all these social events and everything. You're just like, hey, uh, not trying to be that guy, but also I don't want to fuck up my health to hurt your feelings. <laughs> but usually if people are good and they got a nice spread of food... Usually there's stuff you can eat. You don't have to eat the main meat entree or anything like that. You just have the sides. How how do you think animals get their protein? They get it through all the gr all all the grains and all the grass and all the other shit they eat. That shit's packed with protein. The animal tissue you're consuming, yeah, it might have a little bit of protein in it by nature, but the reason why it's so high in protein is because of all the shit they eat. It's not because they're naturally packed with protein. It's because of all the plants they eat. Whether it's grains or grass or anything. So, enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> there's got to be a way to talk about this. There's got to be a way to talk about I'm just, I'm just trying to express... I've only been doing this really since the beginning of the year. Um, it's just funny, you know? But I live in a good city where there's a lot of vegetarian and vegan places. Uh, 
for the most part, if I want to indulge, I'll have sushi. I've said it before. I think veggie burgers are the shit. They are delicious, and I feel way better eating them because there's, like, no saturated fat. So, uh, yeah, this amazing podcast is going off the rails. Basically, what I was trying to say was one of the tricky friends about meeting new people and, you know, trying to make new friends is you you can bring it up pretty casually and go like, hey, I'm kind of vegetarian, you know, sir. You don't have to use the word vegan because apparently that word is taboo. But just be like, hey, I tend to lean towards being a vegetarian. Is there any way you can work with me? It, it's easy if, like, it's a small get-together. Like, yeah, sure, I could accommodate you. If it's a big gathering of juggalos or some shit, you don't have to make that. I don't have to make that distinction. Again, if there's a lot of people, there's going to be a spread, and you could just work off the spread. You can pick and choose a la carte, bitch. Um, so, yeah, like I've mentioned, I've been on a Deftones kick the past couple weeks. During this whole process of moving and uh, getting settled in and organizing, going through wedding gifts, I've been listening to pretty much Papa Roach and Deftones discographies. And out of Deftones' eight albums, I find it really hard to rank them. But I can tell you their worst album is Gore, which came out last year. And their best album is Around the Fur, the one I'm currently listening to. That we're listening to. You're here with me. And I hope you're enjoying it. So, you'll find with some bands that their first album tends to be really raw. And it is really great. Like, Korn and Deftones, both of their first albums, respectively, are very raw and very great, you know? But around the time their second album comes out, it becomes more refined in a way, but it's still raw. So that's why with Deftones, I find Around the Fur to be their best album because it's got the rawness of adrenaline, but it's also got, like, the hooks and the fun of like white pony or their self-titled like the heaviness it's basically just like a perfect blend you know and you know now it doesn't have to be a perfect blend to be their best excuse me like horn's second album life is peachy i would say that's probably like my second favorite album from them but it's still really raw and really heavy but it's not like a blend it's like a an album in and of itself you know but uh yeah, hold on a second. Let me let me see if I can do this real quick. Let me see if I can just live pre-recorded on this podcast. Let me see if I can rank Deftones eight major albums. Okay, so from worst to best, I'm gonna do my best here. So from worst, we got gore. Uh, and then we got, wow, um, as much as I love this album, I would probably say Saturday Night Wrist, and then Diamond Eyes, and then Koi no Yokan. That album is actually really good. So that's the first four albums, which are their last four albums, uh, So their worst albums are their last four. Their best ones are their first four, which I'm about to rank right now. Uh, I guess number four would be Adrenaline. Uh, Three would be, you guys are going to hate me, but White Pony. Number two would be their self-titled album. And number one would be Around the Fur. Now again... That's kind of just without doing any serious analysis, but that's how I would rank their albums from best to worst. I love Around the Fur. I think it's just their overall, their best album. And then their self-titled album, which is the first album I ever heard from them, and that's a really weird album to get into Deftones with. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, But that's like one of their heaviest albums. But like... When they go heavy, they go hard. But then when they go soft, 
they go so beautiful like anniversary of an uninteresting event gorgeous song so but yeah some of my favorite tracks are off their self-titled album like bloody cape when girls telephone boys battle axe uh and then i love white pony okay that's most people that's most people's favorite deftones album that's kind of, that that's when they reached breakout success white pony was the album that you know and most people they hear deftones they think the song change i watched you change that's a great song but it's honestly one of their more simplistic songs um if you really want to get into white pony I would strongly suggest listening to uh, RX Queen. Um, of course, uh, it came out in the year 2000, and new metal was still pretty damn relevant, especially with Linkin Park breaking out. So they asked them, they said, hey, look, this White Pony album is great, but there needs to be a single on here that kind of appeals. Even though you guys don't want this new metal label, your first two albums kind of scream it a little bit. So... Can you take the song uh, Pink Maggot, speed it up a little bit, and make it a little more uh, mainstream so we can do a sick music video? And that's what they did. They came out with Back to School. So uh, songs like Back to School and Change are pretty much the commercial drivers to that album and to that band. So like when you think Deftones, you might think of those songs. But I'm telling you, outside of that, there is so much more to appreciate about that band. But if you want to start with White Pony, that really is... Yeah, White Pony and... I guess uh, Diamond Eyes. Those are the two best albums where if you're not exactly a huge heavy metal or new metal fan, I'd listen to one of those albums first. Probably White Pony. White Pony's better. But if you're more into their recent stuff, Diamond Eyes, it's a good it's a good way to get into them. But if you really want to start getting heavy, you know, listen to like fucking Poltergeist from Koi no Yokan or listen to Bloody Cape. Um, and if you want to go straight into their melodic stuff, listen to uh, um, Saturday Night Wrist, um, even though that album has a couple of heavy tracks. Like Kim Dracula, Rats, Rats, Rats. Uh, but yeah, it, it, again, like every album has something great to offer. Um, it's just funny because I, I what I had wrong about Deftones all this time was I thought that they had been doing uh, seven and eight strings forever, you know? But it really wasn't until their fourth album, you know, self-titled, that's when they started introducing the, the detuned guitars. Ugh, I let this coffee sit out too long. Fuck. Uh, uh. Sorry. Yeah, like, God, I could do a whole podcast on them. But that's why I'm ending off this podcast by talking about this. So if you want to go ahead and say goodbye, that's fine. But if you want to listen to me talk about Deftones for a couple minutes, stick around. Because I'm Jay Dennis. I fucking love new metal. Whether or not it's underground or it's commercial, it's my shit. So I'm going to talk about it. It's my podcast. Um, yeah, I didn't realize adrenaline for the most part was all in standard tuning, uh, but it still achieves some raw heaviness. You know, Chino's got that kind of voice that sounds really great throughout a whole range of tunings and sounds, you know, um, around the fur is primarily in C sharp. It sounds like, so again, you're still on the six string guitars. Uh, a lot of White Pony, I believe, is in uh, Drop C. <laughs> Sounds like it. I don't hear any, D, uh, you know, seven string or eight strings yet. But then, but then, oh, as soon as you hear Hexagram and most of the other songs on Self Titled, their fourth album, that's when it starts to get heavy in terms of guitar work. Holy shit. Bloody Cape. Oh, God. Like, aside from like a couple Limp Biscuit tracks, if Raptor Riot could cover any song live, it would be Bloody Cape. That song is amazing. It's in a G sharp, seven string. Uh, 
And then I think Death Blow. I forgot if that's eight string or seven string. And then uh, I think when girls telephone boys, it sounds like it's an A sharp, but it might be in G sharp. Point is, a lot of that Deftone self titled album, which is their fourth album, came out in 2003, I think. That album is when they really started to bring the heavy. But also, at the same time, they really brought the melodic. Um, Because when Saturday Night Risk came out, I don't think you heard a lot of super deep guitars. And then some of the uh, more melodic tracks came out very melodic, very well executed. Chino's voice, like, I feel like vocally, that was his best album with Saturday Night Wrist. Um, What makes me sad, though, is there's a song, I think it's called Mine. It's got Serge Tankian from System of a Down in it. As much as I love Serge and I love his voice, I feel like his... When, when you find out one of your favorite singers or one of the most epic singers of all time is featured on a track and he's got kind of a weak feature, you get kind of sad. So I was kind of disappointed. I was disappointed years ago when I first heard it. This was back when Saturday Night Wrist was still fresh. God, it's 2017, and I'm talking about albums that came out anywhere between 20 to, or sorry, 10 to 20 years ago. Um, let's get a little more recent, I guess. Uh, so after Saturday Night Wrist, we have Diamond Eyes, which came out in 2010, I think. Uh, I remember the summer that came out. I listened to it pretty damn religiously. Listened to Sex Tape a lot. Uh, me and my friend made fun of <laughs> Command Control because it's just like... Ba, ba, ba. Yes, ba, ba. It's like the guitar is really just, it's just really sloppy, but it's really rhythmic. It's got such a, a heavy swing to it. And I, I forgot if it's F sharp or E, but it's like, it's eight string. So yeah, Diamond Eyes, they bring back the eight string. Uh, You've Met the Butcher is heavy as hell. Uh, Risk. Yeah, I would say... You know, if you want to hear their more classic stuff and you want to get right into them, listen to White Pony. But if you want to get a little heavier, listen to Around the Fur, because that's their best album. And then, but if you want to stay a little bit more recent, uh, I would say Diamond Eyes. You've probably heard a couple of their tracks on the radio. And then, oh God, their bass player, he died. Sorry, I, I didn't want to sound callous about that. It sucks. Um... Chai died, Chi, um, and then Koi no Yokan came out in uh, 2012. That's another album that I listened to pretty hard when it came out. I was in my first apartment. It was, I think, almost winter time. That album's about to turn five years old. So, uh, yeah, there were a couple tracks on that album that really stuck with me, like Leathers, Poltergeist, uh, but I, I recently re-listened to it a couple times in my car because I had a copy burned. And that album is amazing. Like, wow. After five years, it's, it, it sounds even better. Even the first two tracks, which initially bored me, Swerve City and uh, Romantic Dreams, the songs are way better next time around, you know? And then, final album, Gore. I will be re-listening to that album probably today and tomorrow. Sometime this week I'll be... Because I actually went out and bought the hard copy when it came out. Like, it's got the best artwork, kind of. Of course, Around the First got a hot chick. But I love the artwork to Gore. and uh, But it's my least favorite album. It, I don't know if it was just Chino uh, fucking having too much influence on the music, the guitars, or whatever. But it seems like when Stefan Carpenter has more influence, it tends to be a better album. But I don't know how much influence Chino had on previous albums. I'm pretty sure he did a lot on White Pony. But that was 17 years ago. People change. Music changes, you know? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, Gore just wasn't that exciting for me. You know, it was cool that they got... Jerry Contrell from Alice in Chains to do a guitar solo in Phantom Bride. Uh, definitely sounded like classic rock. I loved it. The song Gore is pretty great. Uh, I think Rubicon, the closing track's good. But for the most part, 
I think it was the first couple tracks were great. The last couple tracks were great, but everything in the middle kind of sucked. So it was just a very inconsistent album. Wow. This is a long podcast. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. I'm Jay Dennis. This was the podcast, DJ Dennis podcast for Tuesday, July 18th, 2017. That's right. I had a little bit of breakfast and I recorded this bitch first thing in the morning because I want to hit the ground running. Uh, might be going to Tahoe today, which means I'll be back in California, California, rest in peace, California, fight. It's too early to sing. And in the city, Calif- there's so many California songs. Fuck. I might have to do one. Did I talk about everything? Yep, I did. Wow. Who would have thought that having structure would make for a better podcast? Anyway, I hope the levels are decent. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Here's Wonderwall. Um, yeah, I guess I'll talk to you soon. If you want to, if there's anything you want me to talk about on the podcast, uh, or you have any questions, just uh, send them over to jdennis21 at gmail.com. That is the address I'm currently using until I get a website. That's J-A-Y-D-E-N-N-I-S 21 at gmail.com. You know, that's what all the professionals do. They use Gmail to uh, <laughs> run their business or their entertainment. You know, send me any questions, even if it's a request to go fuck myself. Go ahead. Uh and go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com to download the Sabotage DP. The fuck was that? Did y'all hear that? What the hell? Hold on a second. What the hell's... Oh my god. I don't know if you guys heard any of that. Alright. I know what just happened. Holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. Okay. All right. You guys want to know what just happened? So the last track off of uh, Deftones Around the Fur is called MX. And it's a 36 minute long track. But like most tracks that are the closing track and are that long, it's usually just a song followed by five to 10 to 15 minutes of silence while I'm podcasting. And then all of a sudden you hear just some random track. It could be of the studio, it could be of some clip, but all that weird shit you might have just heard where I thought I was going to die, yeah, that was Deftones. So, about, about, yeah, almost 19 minutes and 50 seconds into uh, MX, you're going to want to shit your pants like I need to right now. So anyway, go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com to download the Sabotage EP for two ninety nine. It's a four track EP. Features a Limp Biscuit cover of Nobody Loves Me and three old school Raptor Riot tracks, which a few of them might end up on an album that I might be working on. So if you want to be there for the early years of Jay Dennis, and it's years, it's plural. So if you've heard me say that shit since 2015 up until 2018, yeah, those are the early years, okay? I'm actually doing shit. Then go support it. And then I'll give back somehow. Ah! I'll give back somehow. Anyway, talk to you next week. Goodbye. Yeah. This is the Jay Dennis Podcast. And I'm making sure that these levels are good. Because I got around the fur playing on my speaker through the phone. Not go through any type of cable. But I forgot to make sure that when the volume kicks up, I couldn't even be overpowered. It's first thing in the morning. Do you expect me to freestyle? I don't even know. But I don't even know. Yeah. This is the part. Can I talk over these kind of parts and make it sound good? Can I talk over these kind of parts and make it sound good? You wish you were this cool back in the 90s like me.